hopefully it will help other people to come along and uh, do as I did. It's being called V-Day in the UK as the first mass vaccination program in the world kicks off this morning. We're keeping a close eye on the storm as precipitation returns to the inland northwest. Everything from rain to snow, even a little freezing rain. Athletes around the world are dancing with excitement. We'll tell you how and when you can see them bust a move at the Summer Olympics. And when quarantines kicked off in March, they brought plenty of jokes about a baby boom. We reached out to local health experts to see if those jokes became a reality. Up with Krem starts right now with Jen York, Joshua Robinson, Jeremy Legou, and Dana Marie McNichol. Good morning. Welcome to Up with Krem. We start with hopeful news out of the United Kingdom this morning. Yeah, take a look at your screen and meet Margaret Keenan, the 90 year old grandmother from England, who is the first person to receive the Pfizer coronavirus vaccine. Oh, it, it was fine. It was fine. Uh, I wasn't nervous at all. It was really good. Yeah. Now, the UK began vaccinating the country with 800,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine and becoming the first Western country to start such a program. The first people to get the shot are people in senior living homes. I thought it was a joke to tell you the truth to start with. I couldn't believe it, you know, but I'm, I'm happy it's happened. And now I've done it and uh, hopefully it will help other people come along and uh, do as I did, you know, try and try and do the best for, to get rid of this terrible thing. And also this morning, BBC News reports the second person vaccinated was 81 year old William Shakespeare. Shakespeare said that he was pleased to be given the jab and the hospital staff had been wonderful. Great to see good old Bill. Now here in the US, the Food and Drug Administration may authorize the Pfizer vaccine as early as Thursday. Today, President Trump will host a White House summit to promote the rapid development of COVID-19 vaccines. President-elect Joe Biden was not invited to the summit. Meanwhile, a report from the New York Times says the Trump administration passed up the opportunity to buy more doses of the Pfizer vaccine beyond an initial 100 million. Now, that decision could delay the delivery of a second batch until June, the report says. But the Trump administration says this report is false and points to five other candidates, including Moderna's, which the FDA could authorize later this month. A lot to watch for. We got a lot coming up. This is all, all eyes are on, on the world right now are on the UK, Jeremy. Yeah, absolutely. And for, you know, a lot of people out there who are a little bit nervous about the vaccine, it's starting early and we know from previous vaccines that all of the side effects occur right away. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to watch. Yeah, pretty much uh, bringing you the information here on Up With Cram as we will continue to do so, especially this week as that question continues to surround here the United States when it will come here. But let's turn our attention to the Tuesday forecast. Oh, Tuesday forecast. Let's do it. Let's get you out the door. A lot less fog as we kick off the morning. Notice even Coeur d'Alene looking a lot better than it has been the past couple of days. We do have some of that thicker fog. That's as you make your way over toward Moses Lake, but even Walla Walla looking quite a bit better as we see our shift in the weather pattern. You can notice it in a few different locations. For starters, it's the temperatures. As you step out the door this morning, it is warm. It is mild. Even Pullman in Moscow knocking on the door of 40. Lewiston 41 already today. That's what we're shooting for here in Spokane later on this afternoon with our temperatures starting out near 30. We're quite a bit warmer than where we've been. Thanks to that layer of clouds overhead kind of acts as a blanket, traps all that heat that we built yesterday. And so things are staying quite mild. You add in the southwesterly flow, that's wind out of the south and the west, and that just pumps in warmer air. Here comes the rain, though. That happens early tomorrow morning. It'll start late tonight in northern Washington as a light freezing rain and then slowly slide its way down into Spokane here. Some areas around town might pick up a bit of a wintry mix, but for the most part, that stays higher in elevation than we have here in Spokane. Later on today, we are looking at temps up near 40 degrees. It's going to be warm. 
And then tonight is when the moisture moves in, so we're going to keep a close eye on that. But for now, just know it's slightly warmer as you step out the door. We'll see you back here in just a few minutes for that full forecast. Jeremy, a coronavirus outbreak at the Airway Heights Correction Center is now in the hundreds of cases. Nicole Hernandez joins us live from Airway Heights to explain what we know right now. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning, Joshua. So as of right now, the Airway Heights Correction Center has a total of 541 coronavirus cases that have come up here specifically since the beginning of the pandemic. But most of those cases are from a recent spike in cases that they've been seeing with this new outbreak. So right now, the Airway Heights Correction Center has the most cases over the course of the pandemic than any other Department of Corrections in the entire state. So what we know as of right now about this is that this outbreak is between both inmates and staff. The number jumped up from 64, which is a huge jump, hundreds more. A spokesperson from the Department of Corrections told Crown that they have room for just 30 inmates at a regional facility run by Airway Heights Correction Center. As of yesterday, they were already 21 people in that facility. The facility also said staff has been required to wear masks since April 10th. Now, this is not the only outbreak we're tracking, though. Geiger Community Cent Correction Center has 52 cases among their inmates. Spoken County Detention Services, which oversees Geiger Community Correction Center, is working with the Spokane Regional Health District to come up with a plan. They started new COVID-19 rules, including all of the staff as being tested weekly, and inmates that have not already tested positive for COVID-19 are being tested twice a week. Geiger set up both an isolation floor and a quarantine area for inmates, and they are continuing, of course, those social distancing rules. Spokane County says right now the people who have already tested positive in the Geiger Community Center are showing either mild or no symptoms at this point, but they're being extra careful because many people in that correction center are planning on being released at some point in the near future. Live in Spokane, I'm Nicole Hernandez. It is 607 on the dot this morning. Time for your morning rush. More news in less time. In Chileam is now under a curfew until further notice because of severe COVID-19 outbreaks. That is according to the Confederated Tribes of the Colville Reservation. The curfew went into effect immediately and it restricts non-essential travel between 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. All residents and visitors must remain indoors. As of yesterday morning, there are more than 1.2 million people using the Washington COVID exposure notification app. The State Department of Health reports that they have issued some verification codes, and that means that some users have tested positive. But since that step is voluntary, the department says they don't know how many codes have been entered. The department also says the verification codes are not tied to individuals, and they are not tracking where those codes were issued. Spokane City Council have amended their resolution over the possible shelter for young people experiencing homelessness. Mayor Woodward had recently announced she did not want a shelter operating in city limits. The nearly $3 million grant from the state expires at the end of 2020 unless it's put to use. The amendment passed last night that added language about LGBT young people being particularly vulnerable. The resolution is a non-binding request for the shelter to be built and it gets a final vote next week. Just eight days into opening for the season, the Hutton Settlements Christmas Tree Farm is sold out. Each year, the Children's Home runs their tree farm to fundraise support for children in need of a long-term alternative home. They posted on Facebook, while we had no idea what to expect this year, we are completely blown away by our community's support once again. They say they've never run out before the, uh, run out of trees rather before the three week mark and that they're working to have more trees for next year. That's your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag up with Krem on social media. Taking a look now at what's trending. Today is the official premiere of a new movie set right here in eastern Washington. The Last Champion stars Cole Hauser, who is best known for his role on the, on the show Yellowstone. You might have also seen him in Goodwill Hunting and Olympus is Falling, but this is a story about second chances and redemption. I can help you find a way out of your mess. By coaching the team. That's right. My name is John Wright. You were in the Olympics, right? Thrown out. Yes, I was. John Wright was a local wrestling champion who was kicked out of the Olympics 
after a failed drug test. And he has to return to his hometown to face the shame, but gets an interesting opportunity while he's there. Now, as you can see with the footage on screen right now, this also takes place in some of the beautiful areas here in the Inland Northwest. Other stars include Randall Battenkoff from X-Men First Class, Hallie Todd from Lizzie McGuire, and Peter Onorati from This Is Us. The film was also directed and produced by Glenn Withrow. He's best known for his work on The Outsider. So a real star-studded cast here. And you can watch The Last Champion right now on Amazon, iTunes, and Google Play. I'm always a sucker for a story like this, Jeremy, but knowing that it was filmed right here, it would be really cool to be able to catch those scenes too, you know? Yeah, I was just watching some of those shots where they had like drones or kids outside, mm -hmm. and I was going, oh man, that looks so inland northwest. The tall pines, the space between them, the landscape, it's cool. Such a distinctive look to the area. Mm -hmm. Even if we didn't know, we could have, I would imagine like in a commercial break, we'd like, is that? Yeah. Is that here? Yeah, we'd, yeah. Be, we'd be behind the scenes going, yeah, you think? I think yeah. so. Yeah. I think so. I'm going to go run down those streets so I feel like I'm in a movie. I, well, I'm just going to watch the movie so I can enjoy it all. All right. That's, <laughs> that's my take. You can run down the street. I'll watch it. I'll let you know how it is. All right. Sounds good. Now, this year, when quarantines first started back in March, there was a pretty popular online joke about the idea of a baby boom. I have heard from our outpatient clinics that they are getting busier um, with new OB patients. Coming up, we reached out to local health experts about whether those jokes became a reality. And believe it or not, our next four nights have the earliest sunsets of the entire year. I'm going to let you know why and what that means for our weather this week.